Uh, we will move on now to our next uh, keynote speaker on this subject, a person whom I've known uh, personally since my partner days uh, uh, from Bangkok. Oliver appeared from Canada, uh, having worked for Destination Canada, uh, came as a rising young star uh, to the Pacific Asia Travel Association uh, executive uh, team and uh, worked uh, tirelessly over there for close to five years, I think, and then uh, established uh, a partnership uh, on, uh, called 2031 Consulting, a Canadian-based innovation-focused management consultancy. Uh, Oliver is a much sought after speaker, a branding and marketing and strategic specialist. Uh, I will not take more time than uh, say, Oliver Martin, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Hiran, and uh, it's, it's good to, to, to be here, at least virtually. Um, I apologize that I can't be in person in Sri Lanka. I'm actually supposed to be in Sri Lanka for Christmas. It was a much anticipated trip with my family uh, for my mom's 70th birthday, but you know, COVID happened. So um, we're, we're doing a really big trip to our living room this year for Christmas, So, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, with that, um, I'll just get into the quick presentation here and because I know you want to get into our discussion with the panel. Um, uh, let me just uh, quickly show you my, uh, my next screen here. I've only got five slides. So this is a scary chart. This is the decline of, of tourism uh, because of COVID. COVID has caused literally the most profound disruption to modern society and especially the travel and tourism industry in modern times. This is the growth of tourism year over year going back to 2000. And you'll see with a few exceptions, we've generally had very, very positive growth. In 2001, after the September, 11, uh, September um, 11th tourism attacks, tourism was flatlined. Um, then we had the SARS impact, heavily um, impacted Asia Pacific, uh, as well as Canada with um, uh, the number of uh, flights coming into Canada. And we saw about a 1% decline in tourism. And then the economic crash of 2009, we had a 4% decline of tourism. With all of those, we always thought we were in unprecedented territory. We um, rallied as an industry, we sought out government support. We really relied on the private sector and government to work in tandem to try and recover back tourism. And for all intents and purposes, our industry managed to um, you know, deal with the crisis and bounce back. Then fast forward to 2020, and we are in dramatically unprecedented territory. When they did these forecasts at the beginning of, say, March, we looked at um, anywhere between um, anywhere between um, a 40 to a 60 percent decline forecasted for the decline of tourism. Um, they revised those forecasts um, at the middle of this year in the summertime, and um, we, we looked at an 80% decline in tourism. This is international arrivals. So this is Sri Lankans going into India, Indians going into China, Chinese going into Britain. So international tourism at the an international level. We are now way off that. We are now looking at anywhere between an 80 and a 95% decline in international tourism. And it's for a number of reasons. Number one, borders are closed. Number two, so many airlines are just not traveling. Or number three, there's so many restrictions in place that inhibit the average travel consumer. So we are in unprecedented times, and this is very much a negative news story. Um, not to be the bearer of bad news, but this has also caused dramatic change in our industry. So the impact of how it's affected our industry. There have been some pronouncements, largely by tourism marketers, that COVID will, um, you know, will go away and that we'll get back into normality next year or the year after. But there is substantial research that shows that the mechanics and the operations of global tourism have been dramatically impacted and will continue to be dramatically impacted. First and foremost, it's the whole concept of safety and security. Safety and security now is the prime driver in the decision-making process. Whereas we like to think of tourism as an emotional personality delivered good and service, where we make decisions on our left brain, um, we are now in the territory of people and consumers and the industry making decisions on the right brain, rational effects because of safety and security. Secondly, we are looking at a substantially decreased overall population in outbound travel consumers. And that is very much impacting 
the lower yield charter and package-based tourism um, side of the equation. Um, these uh, travelers tend to be very price sensitive and because of COVID not just being a healthy and safety concern, but also an economic concern, this is also now affecting the travel population. Related to these two items is COVID has very much advanced the transition of our industry into being digitally first consumer and travel trade engagement. So that means, you know, brochures, travel trade shows will start to decline as consumers are more engaged in using digital media and digital means to try and connect with brands and connect with tourism operators. And then fourth, and this is the reason why we're all here today, is that this has also put enormous pressure on governments to elevate the tourism focus, desperate for those export revenues. And we know this is very, very important for Sri Lanka. <clears throat> um, also with this is COVID has exposed some systemic challenges that have really always been there and impacted how we have developed as an industry. Um, what I've got here on the screen is, um, while Sri Lanka has seen net positive tourism growth since 2009, and you know, prior to the war, we know your tourism was very much at static levels. And then after 2009, you saw that dramatic increase in tourism with a few exceptions. Um, and, and if anything, the Sri Lanka tourism industry is extremely resilient. Um, what this has exposed is that so much of this positive growth in tourism arrivals for Sri Lanka has actually shown that Sri Lanka is underperforming many of its peers in terms of yield, dispersal of travelers, and the seasonality effects. And what we've got here is average daily spending and the value of travel consumers from the lower end on the left-hand side of the screen up into the higher end um, in terms of some of these other destinations. So Sri Lanka is kind of in that middle to lower end of the pack in terms of the spend that travelers um, spend in the destination and where they go into Sri Lanka. So what we have seen, and this is based on hard data, is that Sri Lanka is kind of attracting this lower yielding type of traveler. And in an ideal world, and exactly what Kamali said, is we want to go after that more sophisticated, higher value traveler. That does not necessarily mean luxury. This just means a traveler that's willing to spend more stay longer and disperse beyond, you know, your traditional gateways of Gaul, um, Siguria, Colombo, Nagambo, et cetera. Um, now, in terms of a roadmap, and again, um, Kamali highlighted many of these points, but I think first and foremost, if I was to leave anyone on the phone and the Zoom um, with any sort of main points, I think the most important point here is that if we look back to 2019, as um, um, you know, our strategy to take us forward into recovery, that's the rear view mirror. We're looking in the wrong direction. First and foremost, I think we need a robust strategic plan and a whole of government and industry partnership for Sri Lanka to take us forward. And a strategy means we put a bunch of ideas on the table, we prioritize them, we figure out how we need to resource them, we figure out who needs, who's in charge, and then we take that plan forward to get us through recovery and into longer term resiliency for Sri Lanka. The second point here, and I, I really want to stress this, and I've been to Sri Lanka many, many times, um, Sri Lanka is a premium tourism experience, period. It needs to be promoted and positioned as a premium tourism experience. And again, premium doesn't mean luxury. Premium just means that you value and understand your tourism experience and price it and position it and market it as such. The thing that breaks my heart is seeing lower yielding mass tourism in Sri Lanka, not respecting your natural environment, not respecting your cult culture and your traditions. We want the type of traveler that wants to experience everything that Sri Lanka has on offer. Related to this is we need to do much better in terms of definitively using evidence and research to make smart decisions for the destination. And part of that is, and I cannot stress this more, is that Sri Lanka really needs to have a proper consumer segmentation. We need to go after the culturally aware, authentic experiencing 
adventure type travel consumers that value the Sri Lanka brand. The destinations that have doubled down on segmentations have always received two to five years out, a higher yielding type of travel consumer. And then the last part in this is um, that Sri Lanka needs to also do more substantial investment in not just product and experience development, but the itineraries that go with that and the packaging that how, it, um, how these things can be packaged. We know some operators have done this, but this needs to be done in more way in Sri Lanka. Now, the last point in all of this is while we are you know, a little less than a month away from uh, Western New Year's and the belief that everything is gonna turn back to normal after January 1st, the reality is that's not gonna happen. We had some sobering news last week with the US, UK and Germany, the three big um, Western uh, based um, uh, destinations with uh, drug manufacturing facilities that they are gonna use most of 2021 and well into 2022 to roll out vaccines and then distribute those around the world and then ensure that vaccination can happen in a substantial way with populations and we develop herd immunity. So next year, as much as we want to think that it's going to turn into the positive ter territory for our travel and tourism industry, 2001 is very much going to be the year of the vaccination. And this means lower levels of outbound business and leisure tourism. So we as an industry, we as the Sri Lankan tourism industry need to think smarter, better and faster in terms of all those other competitors out there that are gonna be going after that smaller pie of outbound travel consumers. Um, travel consumers will, uh, will go back to traveling as much as they can in 2001, but we're gonna be looking at substantially smaller numbers. Um, with that, um, Hiran, I'm going to pass it back to you to uh, kick off the discussion. Thank you very much, uh, Oliver. It was very inspiring. Uh, and thanks for the, all the input. I'm sure uh, all the listeners in Sri Lanka and maybe a few outside uh, will, will benefit from that. And we too learned that, yes, we need to uh, get the value proposition in. And that's uh, exactly what our uh, president uh, mentioned yesterday as well. So I'll come back to that. Uh, later on. Uh, 